things we look for first and foremost with any of the hotels is uh, the market. Uh, the market determines what the metrics are going to be in terms of demand, supply. Uh, and if a hotel is located in a market that we like, that's got favorable demand supply metrics, then we start looking at the types of hotels that we would want to own. Uh, to give an example, we look at the, really the biggest markets that over time have done the best in terms of uh, uh, demand growth, uh, modest or, or limited supply growth, and they have done the best in terms of their rev par growth over the uh, over many years. And we track all the information and when the, the, ti the timing is right we look at those markets to buy properties. And when we look at the properties specifically, uh, like many things in real estate, it comes down to location. Where's the hotel located? And then the particulars matter. So what is going on in the hotel? Who's managing the hotel? Should that be changed? Is there a brand on the hotel? Should it be changed? Is it independent? Should it be a brand? Uh, does it have enough outlets, or should there be less outlets, and should you, or should you leave something out? Does the hotel need, be, need to be renovated? Or a combination of all those things. And when we look at those things and put them together, we figure out if this is going to be something that we think you know, makes the most sense for us. Key West, for people who know it, uh, that have gone down there, they love it. It is a supermarket when you think about the things we're looking for in hotel markets. The supply and demand uh, metrics are so tilted towards the owner operator and have been for many years. In fact, if you look back at the data for really 25 years, for as long as Smith Travel's been uh, collecting such data, Key West has been one of the top markets in terms of demand growth, it's been one of the best markets in terms of supply growth, and it's a tiny market. Uh, their supply growth has been less than 1% or consistently over the last 25 years. And the reason is, is that Key West has instituted a thing called ROGO. It's a rate of growth ordinance. The city was smart enough to realize that we're an island, we can't possibly keep building, we don't have the infrastructure in terms of the police and safety, um, sewage, things like that. And so they limit the, the, uh, the amount of rooms, both hotel rooms, uh, bedrooms, that can be built. And when this is in place, the growth has been very slow. And so what's happened is as demand continues to grow, the rates get higher and higher. And it becomes a much more profitable place for us to be. So we love a market like Key West. And people have asked us, would that be a, a, a core market for you? And the reality is we'd like to look at other hotels in Key West. The problem is, is that Key West is very tiny. And with uh, 4,800 rooms over the last 15 years, there's really only been a couple of, of hotels that actually have transacted. So we'd like to own more there. But markets like that are bullseye markets for us. You know, we, you asked about Key West. There's other markets that have those characteristics. And to the extent that we can move more of the portfolio into markets where the demand is strong and the supply is limited, uh, we're better off. And when we look across the country, those markets, uh, a lot, lot of those markets are in the West Coast. If you look at places like Los Angeles, you look at Seattle, San Francisco, uh, the barriers to entry are not just dollars in terms of actually finding the land and buy and building the property. Uh, they're getting the permitting is so difficult because the communities there are not interested in, in further building. And I'll give you one example because we have we have a hotel in, in Santa Monica on Ocean Avenue overlooking the water. Uh, it's a phenomenal location and building there is very difficult. We also have interests in hotels that are actually on the beach in Santa Monica. And after these two hotels were built in Santa Monica, the the city actually passed an ordinance called Proposition S that they no longer want hotels to be built on the beach in Santa Monica. Well, that's music to our ears. I mean, they are the only hotels that will be on the beach uh, unless they change that law. So that's the kind of thing we look for, and there's more and more of those restrictions uh, in the West Coast. That's the most interesting, fun, and maybe complicated part of our uh, job, is that we're very open to working with different operators. And the reason is simple, is that uh, it makes us better. We're an owner, and, uh, and we work with all our operators. And to the extent that we can get best practices from different owners, uh, different operators, and brands, it's going to make us better with the other hotels. So as an example, I don't care who the worst particular hotel management company is on our list. And there has to be somebody ranked number 20. They will have a good idea from time to time, and we'll take that idea and we'll try to pepper it throughout the rest of the portfolio so that the rest of the portfolio benefits. That's been a phenomenal program for us. And so we want to continue to grow that. We don't want to stop at 20. We're willing to have more and more management companies work with us uh, as we continue to grow our portfolio overall. So it's been 
it's been great, um, it's been interesting, and uh, it's been uh, eye-opening to learn from all sorts of different operators.